I've been working from home for a long time and uh, I'm lucky enough to have a few computers and tablets to work on with. Apple wants you to be even more productive on an iPad with its new software update on iOS 13.4 that's been out for a few weeks that supports the trackpad. There are also a number of keyboards that have trackpads on them. They basically can turn your iPad into a laptop or kind of like a laptop. There are three options that I've been testing. The most prominent is Apple's Magic Keyboard. This fancy thing is for the iPad Pro and it's really expensive, but it's really nice. You probably heard about it. It costs $300 or $350 for the 11 or 12.9 inch version. But I've also been trying the Bridge Pro Plus, which is also for the iPad Pro. This is $200 or $230, but you still need an iPad Pro 2018 or 2020 model. And then the most affordable one is the Logitech Combo Touch, which is $150. And the Logitech Combo Touch works with an iPad 10.2 inch or a 10.5 inch iPad Pro or iPad Air. That's one part of the Logitech Combo Touch, and that's the other part. It's detachable and connects with the smart connector. So which one do you go with? Now, one thing you have to keep in mind is what iPad you have might determine which one you get in the first place. The Magic Keyboard has a great trackpad. It has a great keyboard. It feels great when setting it up on a desk. It's pretty good on your lap, and I'm not wild about all the angle limitations, but for a lot of uses, it's pretty great, except for when you use it as something to, to want to read on, which you'd be stuck like that. It's heavy though. This thing is heavy. It feels like it has a gravitational pull that is uh, greater than other gadgets that I have. One cool thing that Apple did include on the Magic Keyboard is an extra USB-C port for charging. Now, it's extra because if you use that, you still have access to the USB-C port over here, which you could use for a dongle or connecting to a monitor or a splitter or whatever else. So that's pretty nice. Now you have to factor in price. Price weighs in like a giant umbrella over the Magic Keyboard because at $300 or $350, that is the price of an entry-level iPad or practically the price of the iPhone SE, which just came out. It is a lot of money. It's an Apple Watch. Um, it's a Nintendo Switch. There are a lot of things you can get for that much money. And a lot of people do not have very much money right now or are trying to save it. So it's a real luxury pick. And on top of that, you're layering the iPad Pro, which starts at $800. And if you're gonna get an Apple Pencil, this thing is like well over $1,000 into the $1,500 range for gearing up with all of this stuff. Now, if you do that, you're gonna have a really fancy, nice device that I think you're gonna like, like a luxury car but it's not necessarily going to answer all the needs that you would want for it to completely replace your Mac or PC. That's because of iOS. iOS 13.4 integrates the trackpad and there's a lot of cool stuff you can do, but it still doesn't feel fully unleashed for what these accessories could do for you. I'm hoping that in iOS 14 that some of that stuff comes, but of course that's a hope. And we'll have to see how that stuff manifests. Just to let you know, I feel like you could do just about everything with this, but you'd have to come up with particular shortcuts or get used to the workflow that iOS may be imposing on you on the iPad. Now let's move on to Bridge Pro Plus. Bridge Pro Plus was the first trackpad enabled keyboard case that I saw for the iPad Pro. One thing to know about the Bridge Pro case and the reason why you should wait on it is there's supposedly a firmware update coming that may fix some of the trackpad issues that I saw. If that's the case, great. But at this point, I would definitely hold off on it until we see more on that one. Uh, it kind of takes itself out of the running for, for one reason, which has to do with the trackpad. And I'll get to that in a second. At $200 or $230, this is a middle ground pick uh, less money than Apple's, you'll save about $100. Uh, the keyboard is really good. The keyboard feels more like a traditional laptop and it's a little more raised keys, uh, a little more pillowy feeling, um, kind of almost like a like an Asus or like, like laptops I've reviewed in the past. I'm very familiar with this backlit keyboard layout. The extra row of keys is super helpful. The trackpad is not enabled to have the same smooth sense of controls or even all the gestures that are available on Logitech's 
or on the standalone Magic Trackpad or on Apple's. The other thing is that this is Bluetooth paired, so it's not connecting directly. Uh, that's fine, except that the way it connects with the iPad is with these rubber hinged feet where you have to push the iPad into this. Uh, I'm not wild about that because this is going up right against the glass. And when you're bending it, that's okay. Uh, when you're pulling it out, I feel like I'm gonna strain the iPad or, or, or damage it. So I'm really coddling it and it kind of freaks me out a bit. There is a uh, magnetic back cover that will provide some extra protection on your iPad when this is attached. On my lap, it feels great. This is the best lap accessory in the sense that it can bend all the way back and you can use it like a laptop. The weighting of the keyboard case feels the most like a laptop. So you're gonna feel the most flexibility in bending it to match what you need. Now, finally, I'm gonna to get to Logitech's solution. Now, Logitech worked with Apple on this keyboard and it's for people who don't have the iPad Pro. So you're gonna save a lot of money here. It's trackpad enabled, plus it's on a model that's less expensive. If you're getting a 300-ish dollar iPad that's 10.2 inch, or you have the 10.5 inch iPad Air, which is in the $400, $500, $500 range, uh, and you're adding this $150 keyboard, you're talking about anywhere from, my math is terrible, $450, $500, $600 is that kind of range, which is a lot less than the $1,000 plus. And what you're getting out of it is pretty much the same as far as the keyboard and trackpad go. Logitech has made uh, something called the Slim Combo before, these like Microsoft Surface-like arrangement where you have this uh, case on the iPad, then you have this keyboard which attaches to the smart connector, snaps on right there, and you have this floppy but functional uh, keyboard that you can stand up on a desk, and it's got a kickstand right there. It's very versatile in the sense that you can bend it to the right angle. You don't have to use the keyboard all the time. So if you want to prop up something, have the kids watch a movie or something, this is a perfectly functional case. And it has a pencil loop. So pretty great, it has backlighting, and the keyboard is really good. The keyboard is maybe my least favorite of all three in the sense that it's a little bit soft and I didn't feel it was quite as lightning responsive, but it's perfectly responsive. It was fine. The dedicated, keys over here are helpful in terms of play, pause, brightness, and all that, a home button. The trackpad feels just as great as Apple's uh, Magic Keyboard and is really helpful for navigating. This thing is, is thick. It adds a lot of thickness to the iPad, but maybe that's good if you're using it with kids. It's not lap friendly though. You can put it in your lap. I did kind of balanced it there. You can see that it looks like it's gonna fall off. It's much better on a desk. So if you're gonna be typing in a furious state on your lap, this is not a great option. But every other piece in it, I like. I like its price. I like its versatility. And again, $150 is still half the price of an entry level iPad. So that's not cheap either. It's just less crazy expensive. So that's the Logitech Combo Touch. And again, which one do you get? Well, it's apples to oranges a little bit with these two because if you have one iPad, you're gonna get this one. If you're gonna get the Magic uh, Trackpad, Magic Keyboard, that means you have an iPad Pro. My favorite overall probably is the Magic Keyboard because it just has such a luxury feel and the keyboard feels fantastic. And propped up on a desk, it kind of feels like, um, like a mini iMac. So I thought I'd just give you a sense of what selfie videos would look like if you're putting them in the Magic Keyboard. You can angle as high as this, which is too high, or you can tilt a little lower, or lower, or lower, or lower. That's too low. But let me see if I can angle this up to, hey, not bad. Of course, I have to look over to where the camera is, which is over here in order to make eye contact. Hello. I hope that gives you some help and advice in terms of what to get and what to look for. Uh, none of them are gonna really replace your PC or your Mac, but they're gonna do a lot to take a step forward in making your iPad feel a little more like a laptop and maybe help you feel a tiny bit more sane. Or maybe that's just me.